Hi everybody, it's Jen with OpenSource.com bringing you the top five articles this week, November 14th. At number five, GraphHopper, a fast and flexible open source trip planner. Creator Peter tells, about, tells us about his route and trip planning software, GraphHopper. The code is licensed under Apache 2.0 and you can take a look under the hood on GitHub. The team at GraphHopper is on a mission to provide a worldwide instance for car routing, biking, and walking called GraphHopper Maps. For the more techie of you out there, Follow Peter's instructions in the article to host it on your own servers to avoid network latency. And, as typical of open source software, GraphHopper gives a shout out to two giants whose rich open data this new project has built upon, OpenStreetMap and NASA. At number four, is the business of FOSS really community software? A discussion began at the Typo3 Eastern Europe conference this year around rebranding or extending the terms open source and FOSS to community software in order to give solution providers an alternative way to talk about free and open source software that maybe feels a little bit more safe and familiar. They brought their discussion to opensource.com, publishing an article about why we need a new term, and then another on how and why the discussion got started in the first place. In a move to begin taking feedback from the community at large, a poll was added to opensource.com asking which term best describes the software you work on. The poll currently has 271 votes, most saying that open source software is the term that best describes their work, with a close second to community software. The discussion is still open, so if you'd like to cast your vote and have your say, check out the article and poll on the site. At number three this week, Eight new tips for getting things done with OpenStack. Jason Baker's monthly guide to all things OpenStack hit big with readers this week. Did it have something to do with OpenStack Summit in Paris last week? Baker attended the conference and reported back to us that it felt like everyone possible working on OpenStack was at the conference. We jokingly said nothing, nothing must have gotten done on OpenStack while the conference was happening, although we know that's not true. But it was worth it, as the keynotes covered real user experiences like Tim Bell on, of CERN on the use of OpenStack for scientific research. At number two this week, open source accelerating the pace of software. Gordon Half is Red, is Red Hat's cloud evangelist and regularly speaks at industry events. His article on opensource.com this week spoke about the many ways different open source cloud communities and projects are making a difference. Projects like Docker, Kubernetes, Apache Mesos, Ceph, and Open Daylight, just to name a few. What's notable is they're all working together, collaborating to build upon and amplify the work each is doing to propel the software forward. Half says, OpenStack is a great example of how different, perhaps only somewhat related open source communities can integrate and com combine in powerful ways. It's a dynamic that just isn't possible with proprietary software. Finally, at number one, you don't know JavaScript, but you should. This article is a partial transcript of a talk that took place at Rochester Institute for Technology in New York on JavaScript. It may sound run-of-the-mill, but open source and JavaScript guru Kyle Simpson, or Getify Online, gave the talk. If you don't know his name, maybe you know his books. He's written a lot about JavaScript over the years. Most recently, he's writing a book series called You Don't Know JS. In this talk, Kyle addresses what he's seen over and over in his years teaching JavaScript to developers. They've learned it incompletely and properly for the first time. They've learned it incompletely and improperly the first time around and are having a hard time relearning it. So his book series is meant to teach JS or JavaScript the right way the first time to developers and reteach it, re it to those who are struggling with it day to day. You can see Kyle's answers to a Q&A session after the talk with the class, as well as more on his new book series in the article. P.S. is being written on GitHub, so you can read it for free right now. Check out the links in the article and in the show notes below. And our article is published every weekend, so you can see all this great info, links to the good stuff we talked about in the video um, online. Thanks so much, and join us next week.